If you know me at all, you know I'm a big fan of the Beacon stuff. Both these things and I'm still rocking the Beacon mic. And my main setup, we're just jumping into it. Here's how to set up your entire stream audio using the Beacon system, either the Beacon Studio or the Beacon mic, because they work the exact same way. Just, just go. I think the reason that I love Beacon stuff so much is because they managed to do something nobody else has. They, they were able to take truly professional audio and redesign it in a way that's easy enough for a beginner to use it. Things like their impressive EQ, their compression, their expander, which by the way is like the main reason I refuse to change out my Beacon mic. I studied sound engineering in college. That was my major and the Beacon stuff is a work of art. This is the second video in a series of four where I'm walking you through the four most popular streaming audio devices. And in each one of these videos, I'm doing a deep dive into a different element of audio for you to learn. In the last video on the Elgato device, we went really deeply into submixes and why they exist, how they work, how to set them up. In this video, we're gonna go into those super important audio effects that I mentioned earlier, things like EQ, compression, expansion, because Beacon does it the best, so we're gonna talk about it in this one. The reason I'm splitting this up across the four videos is so that I'm not repeating myself in every single video. So make sure you check them all out. I will have them all linked down below. Should make it a little easier on you. Just watch that one section if you want. Anyway, onto the Beacon stuff. This is perfect timing though. Beacon just dropped a huge update. And fortunately, Nick on the team here is actually part of the beta testing team with Beacon. So Nick's gonna handle the meat of this video, talking about the interface, how to set it up, and then I'll be back to talk about those audio effects later. So I'll see you in a minute. Don't look at me. I'm going to assume that you already have the software installed. If you don't, pause here, take care of that. Just make sure if you have any other Beacon devices to follow the on-screen prompts for unplugging and replugging in those devices, like a Mix or a Mix Create if you have them. One quick note, as of May 18th, Beacon released an update that is currently in beta, and there are some slight changes to the UI, so if yours looks a little different than mine, there might be an update waiting for you. It fits out of beta. We'll see. A few ground rules to make sure you have the best time possible. Make sure that the Beacon Studio is plugged directly into your computer and not going through like a USB hub or switch. Make sure you got your mic plugged into the XLR jack on the back of the Beacon Studio, and then make sure your headphones are plugged into the headphone jack. The only other part on the Beacon Studio I'll mention is the massive lovely knob that is both your volume adjustment and push to mute and unmute. With everything plugged in, software installed, behold, the Beacon app. As a quick overview, on the left side of the app, this is your navigation bar with each button taking you to a different part of the app. The mixer yet, which is right here, is not enabled yet. We're gonna get back to that in a little bit. Right under that is our Beacon Studio, which is broken up into three sub tabs, mic settings, lighting, and then the device settings. Not to be confused with the Beacon app settings, which are more like global and not per device, that's in the bottom left. This main microphone page is kind of separated into four different sections. Top and center is the equalizer, often abbreviated to EQ. This is a real-time representation of the signal that is coming from your microphone into the Beacon Studio, and it's displayed in a waveform. This is where you can manipulate frequencies to alter the sound of your mic. We're not gonna dive into that just yet either. Below the EQ portion is the tabbed menu for all of the effects that are built into the Beacon Studio. Mic setup, noise suppression, expander, compressor, and headphones. One of the things that makes the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mic unique is the onboard DSP, meaning all of the effects that you can apply to a microphone, they happen on the device, as opposed to the CPU in your computer processing the audio. There are many benefits to this. The big one being that you can apply noise suppression to the mic that you're monitoring in your headphones. But Nicholas, I don't monitor my voice in my headphones. That's yucky. You listen to me, you're going to do it, you're going to like it. You will, you'll learn to like it, I promise. Lastly, on the right side of the app, we're gonna work from the bottom up since the top has the most recent changes. Down here is the mic sampler, which lets you record a quick snippet of you talking into your microphone, and then you can make changes to the mic and then hear those changes in real time. The output gain slider is for increasing the volume of the microphone after all of these effects have been applied. The decibel meter for the mic that you can see bouncing up and down. And then the profile switcher, which is now a collapsible menu. And you can expand and collapse that menu by clicking that little, what is, what is that? A little, a little guy? 
little guy in the top right. Since I already have profiles created for myself because I use the Beacon Studio, I'm just going to create a new one and then I can rename it by right click and rename Senpai. Even though the mixer is currently disabled, I'm just going to create a new mixer profile as well while we're at it. Before I kick you back to Harris to have him cover all of the microphone effects, I'm gonna cover the final tab of the mic setup page, which is for headphones. So starting from the left side, this is where you can control how much of your own voice you can hear in your headphones when you're monitoring, because you do that now, as well as the volume uh, of your PC, all of the audio playback from your PC. You can choose to keep these linked so that these levels will both change at the same time, or you can unlink them and then just change them individually. You can see if you keep them linked, they change based on a ratio. So even though one is going only halfway down, the other one is going all the way down. You might have noticed there's also a second EQ. This is just an EQ for the playback audio in your headphones. So if you have headphones that are a little muddy, you can boost the mids or the highs to bring out that clarity. Or if you tend to have headphones that are a little bit more flat, you can add low end by increasing the bass or increasing the subwoofer using the slider. This is all to personal preference. Every pair of headphones is gonna have a different sound stage. Last but not least, the amp power selection on the right side. So those of you using IEMs or in-ear monitors, you'll be pleased to know that there's a setting just for you. Or if you have some beefy headphones, you know, ones that draw a lot of power, uh, you can change the amp to high impedance mode and you'll be in heaven. Hey, I'm back. I said I would be. Let's talk about mic effects. Specifically this area down here, these tabs are all the different effects for your microphone. Let's start with mic setup. Mic setup is just where you set up the gain of your microphone or how much do you turn up the preamp boosting your voice. This is a very important setting and most of the microphone issues people have are because they set this wrong, which is why I love what Beacon did with a gain graph instead of a gain meter. If you watched the last Elgato video, they use a mic meter and sometimes it can be hard to tell if you're getting it just right. Beacon gives you this perfectly smooth and beautiful graph that shows you the signal level of your microphone over time, making it so easy to tell that your microphone is set properly. And you can see this entire sentence, every time I'm talking, it fits somewhere in this speaking area rectangle, which is what we're looking for. That's how I know I have my mic in properly set. And if it's a little bit too low, you can see my voice is down here. If it's a little bit too high, it goes all the way up here. However, I should mention that Beacon Audio actually uses 32-bit float, so it's very difficult to peak on this microphone. But it looks like 12 decibels is about perfect for my voice, right around this range. So before we jump to the next tabs, let's actually jump up here to EQ, the next most important setting on your microphone. Now, EQ is actually short for equalization. Now, let me actually reset this EQ graph before we get into this. It's kind of like when you put an Instagram filter on a photo to make it pop, except you're doing it on your voice. So by boosting certain frequencies and cutting out certain frequencies, you can brighten up your voice and you can even thicken up your voice. I'm a big fan of a thick voice. So I'm gonna mess around with the EQ a little bit here, just so you can hear what everything does, all while I tell you about today's sponsor, your one-stop shop for all your stream widget needs. Own.pro. Did you know that Own.pro has been hard at work working on clean, minimalist plugins that make your stream pop? They're insanely easy to use, and I'm currently using four on my stream right now. Specifically, the combined chat overlay in order to show both YouTube and Twitch chat on stream at once, the now playing music widget, the label rotator widget that shows the latest events, and the hypometer widget for sub and donation trains. And they're just as easy to customize as they are to set up. Look at all the different now playing music widget options there are. And in the label rotator, I can choose which events are included. And in the hypometer, I can choose which events trigger a new train. A ton of their widgets are free. They're just waiting for you to install them today. So click the link in the description, get started on own.pro, start adding some cool widgets to your stream today. Now you probably noticed as I was going through the EQ that boosting the low end made the voice thick, boosting the high end made the voice a little bit brighter. I, I like to give these two areas a one and a half to a two and a half decibel boost. It just makes my voice pop a little bit more. The low frequency I put at around hundred Hertz, the high frequency I use a shelf. So it's not a little bump, it, it continues up the rest of the way. And I do that around 35, to 4,000 hertz. Around the middle here, especially if I'm using a dynamic mic, I like to give about a two decibel cut right at 500 hertz. These microphones, dynamic microphones, tend to be a little bit mid-heavy, which makes them sound muddy. Cutting a little bit out of there cleans up your voice a little bit. Now, 
Keep in mind, everybody's voice and mic are different. So what I like to do is add a band, boost it up around five to 10 decibels, something really extreme. And then while I'm listening to it, sweep left and right and left again, do it slowly until you can find a spot that just sounds ugly. I'm actually going to use the cue here that's gonna narrow this band to make it more pronounced what each frequency sounds like. And when I find the frequency that sounds bad, oh, that sounds bad. I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna widen that back out again. Now that's called a boost sweep and cut. And that's actually how a lot of EQ is done in the music industry. And once you have your EQ where you like it, I recommend you use the little recording button down here, record yourself, listen to it back and make some minor tweaks while you're not talking. This is how you make sure you're not overdoing it, making your voice sound over processed. It's very easy to go overboard with EQ, but that's pretty much the biggest one. The rest of these will jump through pretty quick. Noise suppression, I've actually never touched. It's adaptive, it's very simple. Just turn it on and it works great. It cuts out a lot of the extra noise in the background. The expander is one of my favorite audio effects. It's like a noise gate, but it's 10 times better. The way a normal noise gate works is you set a volume level here, and as soon as your microphone goes down below that volume, it shuts off the microphone, cutting out all the noise in the background. Now that does work at cutting out the background noise, but if you've ever used a noise gate and you've talked too quiet, you get that weird sweet spot where your voice cuts in and out because the noise gate's turning on and off. You're right on the threshold there. Now an expander is a gradual noise gate that works very similarly. You still set the point where the expander kicks in, but if the signal drops below that, instead of cutting it off entirely, it just drops the volume down more heavily, expands that signal down lower. It makes that transition much more natural. You don't even really hear it. Now, the compressor I also really like. It works just like any other compressor, except they added this attenuation number, both in this bar and in this number here. For the most part, you should all have the same compression settings. Your ratio should be four to one. You don't have to touch, attack, or release. But the thing is, setting the threshold where the compression kicks in is really hard, especially when you don't even know what to listen for. So what I can tell you is what you're looking for is this attenuation to be typically between five and 10 decibels. So you just set your ratio at four to one here and then you move this threshold number up and down until your attenuation is kind of sitting between five and ten while you're talking and that's it if you notice your output which this is your compressed voice this is your uncompressed voice over here if you notice a huge discrepancy between your output and your input you can adjust the makeup gain to kind of make a match a little bit better but that's going to be it for audio effects Back to you, Nick. By default, out of the box, the Beacon Studio is a USB audio interface for inputting your mic into the computer and then playing back your computer audio to your headphones. However, you can unlock it and have it be a digital mixer, giving you virtual channels that you can assign different apps to, control individually, dual output listening devices, and submixing. Now we're not going to go into submixing in this video. Harris just did a deep dive into submixing in the recent masterclass for Elgato Wavelink using the Stream Deck Plus with the XLR dock. So if you want to know more, check out that video. So the Beacon Mixing Suite is what you need to enable for this, which can be done by clicking the mixer button in the top left. It lets you know, hey, we're gonna enable the mixing suite. This is gonna add some audio devices. So we'll just hit enable. This might take a hot second. Sometimes it does. Why are you taking so long? Now, before we enabled the mixing suite, we had a limited number of virtual audio devices. You may have seen like microphone, Beacon Studio, or you might have seen the link one through four. But now that we have this on, we have a handful of virtual audio channels like system, game, browser and chat. Once that source is detected, it'll show up in one of the channels. If you want to rename it, you can double click and we're going to call Microsoft Edge the best browser because that's what it is. Once the source is detected, you can click to drag and drop that source to any other channel. And the color of the uh, source will actually change based on the color that you have set for that channel. Another great thing about this mode is you get two personal listening devices that you can switch between. So if you have your headphones that are plugged into the headphone jack on the back of the Beacon Studio, but you have speakers that are plugged into the back of your computer, you can seamlessly switch between those two devices just by pressing and holding the button on the Beacon Studio. What's great about about the Beacon ecosystem is if you have a Beacon Mix Create alongside the Beacon Studio, this gives you physical control of those virtual audio devices. So the knobs control the volume of the channels. You can use the push to mute functions. It's pretty awesome. A little bonus tip for you. If you click on the plus icon in the mixer, you might notice an aux one, aux two, and hardware. If you have another USB audio device, like an analog mixer that has eight inputs, you can add that USB interface into Beacon. 
as a virtual channel. That means that any audio device that you plug into your computer can be tied into the Beacon Mixing Suite. You'll have volume control, you can mute that audio, you can route it wherever you want. It's awesome. While dual PC setups are my favorite. We're not covering dual PC in today's video. I do want to mention Beacon Link because it's what makes the Beacon Studio a very unique product and it's why I use it for my dual PC setup. The Beacon Studio is actually a dual USB audio interface, meaning that it can be connected to two different computers at once. The way this works is you choose whichever PC is your main device. The Beacon app runs on that PC, like your gaming PC. The studio then also plugs into a second PC, like a streaming PC, and then a smaller Beacon app uh, called Beacon Link runs on that second computer. That gives you four stereo channels that can go from each PC. So if you were to look in your volume mixer, uh, you can see uh, Beacon Link in and out. The outputs have Link one through four, and then the inputs have Link one through four. So this means on your second PC, you can assign apps to different channels, and then you can control the volume or the mute of those apps over on the gaming PC without having to touch the streaming PC at all. It, for dual PC setups, it's awesome. If Harris already told you to comment your favorite emoji for engagement, I can't go back in time and undo that. But if you have another emoji to spare and you want a video on dual PC setups using the Beacon Studio, just do a different emoji and just say something like, give me the two computer content. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Beacon just pushed out a new update that made a few UI changes and also introduced a couple of new features. Some of these very highly requested by the community. I already showed you the profile collapsible drawer on the right side, which is a gift from God. Gives you that sweet, sweet screen real estate back. They've also added hotkey support, which again, very highly requested. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Right now you can use a hotkey to change mixer profiles, change your personal listening device, mute virtual channels, uh, or change Beacon Studio profiles. This last one, I haven't had the chance to test it out personally yet, uh, but one of the really cool use cases that Drix has told me about, he works for Beacon, also a solid dude. You could use hotkeys to change scenes in OBS as well as change mixer profiles in the Beacon app. And now that they've added crossfading between those profiles, that would mean you would have a smooth transition of audio. So you could kind of do like a fade in or fade out uh, instead of having to manually do this uh, physically with faders. And that is pretty dope as well. But guys, that's gonna be it for your Beacon Streaming Masterclass. Uh, it may have felt a little bit like drinking from a fire hose, which is why we're splitting up really important audio stuff across multiple videos. So it's just a little bit more digestible. If you wanna see more of a deep dive into submixes, which you can do on Beacon, I will leave a link to that portion, the timestamp of the Elgato video, where I talk about that in the description down below. And of course, all the Beacon stuff will be linked down below. Those are affiliate links. If you click those and buy something, it helps the channel out a lot. Thank you very much. The next video in this little group will be on the Roadcaster and using that for streaming. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so to check out that video. Uh, hit the like button if you're still watching. And as always, happy streaming. <laughs>